for days now, Donald Trump has been laying the groundwork to cast doubt on the election results if, and only if, he loses, in part by spreading false claims of cheating. Listen to what he said at his rally in Pennsylvania just yesterday. In Lancaster, they found 2,600 ballots all done and by the same hand. In other words, the same exact penmanship, the same hand, the same everything. It was all done by the same pen, the exact same pen. And then they go and they say, well, this, this is a conspiracy theorist. We have to solve this problem because we have a mess on our hands. We got a bunch of cheaters that all they do is think about how they can cheat. When they meet, they meet to find out how can they cheat. Okay, CNN's Daniel Dale is joining me now this morning for a very badly needed fact check. Go. It's lie after lie to, put, to, to lay the groundwork to potentially challenge the legitimacy of another Trump defeat. We've heard him talk about massive numbers of non-citizens voting, just does not happen. Massive fraud with mail-in voting, no evidence of that either. Uh, yesterday, we had the claim that a bad poll for him was a malicious, deliberately rigged suppression poll meant to depress his supporters. No basis for that. And then we had this nonsense about his opponents holding cheating meetings, just a figment of his imagination. Now, you heard him talk about about a particular situation in one Pennsylvania county. And he's glommed onto this at rally after rally in the last week or so, but he's grossly distorting what happened. He's talking about 2,600 phony ballots or phony votes that were supposedly caught. That is not true. What was actually flagged were about 2,500 voter registration applications that were deemed to be suspicious. Those were set aside for further investigation. None of those people were permitted to vote. So these were not votes or ballots. Now, unfortunately, we have a, a uh, misinformation spreader who owns a social media platform. That is, of course, billionaire Trump supporter Elon Musk, who amplified this false claim yesterday. Uh, he called it true. Uh, it, again, again, it is just not true. Now, fortunately, we had an election expert uh, jump on this quite quickly yesterday, a man named David Becker, uh, who wrote in response to Musk's post, actually, this is 100% false. They did not find 2,600 ballots, not even close. They caught about 2,500 voter registration applications before process processing them, meaning they protected election integrity, the system worked, and voting is secure, thanks to the diligence of election officials in Pennsylvania. You are a treasure, Daniel Dale, going through all that. Let's get to uh, our top stories and then get to Jeffrey. Voters heard very different messages from the candidates over the final weekend of campaigning, with Donald Trump delivering dark and divisive remarks over several rallies. Do you want to lose your life savings because we put a weak and foolish woman in the White House? No. Do you want to lose your job and maybe your house and your pension because Kamala has the economic understanding of a child? Never once did she call. Never once did she visit. She visited one time in an area that had nothing to do, you know, she liked it. But essentially, never once did she visit. If she wins, you will live. The rest of your life as second class citizens in your own country. That's what's happening. We had the safest border in the history of our country the day that I left. I shouldn't have left. I mean, honestly, because we did so we did so well. I have a piece of glass over here. And I don't have a piece of glass there. And I have this piece of glass here. But all we have really over here is the fake news, right? And to get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much. Cause I don't mind. I don't mind that. They, 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 they laugh and they applaud John at him saying they'd have to shoot the press and I don't mind that. And that's never understand. In 2024, that is a laughing and applause line at a political rally. Just like in 2023, Donald Trump mocking Paul Pelosi mm. for being bludgeoned nearly to death and and making jokes about that. And that was applause line. I will ask the question that I think is a fair question to ask. 
who raised these people? Yeah. Because they, they were not raised by anybody in my neighborhoods that I grew up, any middle class neighborhoods that I grew up in. These people were not there. They were not raised. I mean, they weren't in the classes I went to growing up. In, in elementary or middle or, or, or high school or college, they just weren't there. That wasn't the America I grew up in where people would laugh at the idea of people of press getting shot. Like everybody would like sit around like, what? What's he talking about? Or, 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 or uh, again, the, 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 at the uh, Puerto Rican other joke. things, laughing at the Puerto Rican joke. My they, God. That Puerto Ricans are a pile of trash are laughing at a 82, 83-year-old man being bludgeoned nearly to death. That's an, that's a, that's a, an applause line? That's a laugh line? Again, again, where, who are these people? Where, where are they coming from? And who raised them? And how did Donald Trump twist their point of view so much in nine years that the brutalization of an 83-year-old man is something to laugh about, or the shooting of press members is an applause line. Yeah, laughs and cheers when Trump suggested the press should be shot. And my, my friend, the legendary photographer at the AP, Evan Vucci, who's traveling with the Trump campaign here, says that as each rally goes on, particularly last night in, in Georgia, the threats from the crowd to the press, they're there in the arena, only growing. Uh, they're really concerned there about the security situation. And that's that's part of the closing argument, Jeffrey Goldberg, that Donald Trump is seemingly making. It is it is dark. It is dangerous. It is portends violence. Uh, and it's a candidate who yesterday had alternately seemed furious and exhausted. But this is the last message he's leaving with the American voters. Well, you know, we're talking about someone who admires certain aspects of Hitler's leadership. These new numbers that we're seeing may be what's driving what we're hearing on the campaign trail. But Trump basically creating doubt about the fairness of Tuesday's election and sure sounding like he's laying the groundwork to contest it if he loses. We had the safest border in the history of our country the day that I left. I shouldn't have left. I mean, honestly, because we did so we did so well. Trump saying he shouldn't have left the White House. He did, of course, but just barely. For people who might hear that and say, well, he's not being serious. Remember, four years ago, Maggie Haberman reported that Trump was telling people, quote, I'm just not going to leave. Here's how Vice President Harris responded to that comment from Trump today. I would ask, in particular, people who have not yet voted to not fall for his tactic. In 2020, he lost. And the systems that are in place for this election in 2024 have integrity. They are good systems. And the vote of the people will determine the outcome of this election. You hear Harris there talking about the fairness of what's expected to happen on Tuesday night. What Trump said today on the campaign trail, though, about the election was far from the only dark comment that we heard. He also called Democrats, quote, demonic and mused about violence against members of the press who are covering him. I have a piece of glass over here. And I don't have a piece of glass there. And I have this piece of glass here. But all we have really over here is the fake news, right? And to get me, somebody would have to shoot through the fake news. And I don't mind that so much, because I don't mind. It's remarkable to hear the laughter in the background about those comments. I should note the Trump campaign later claimed that what he said there, what you just heard for yourself, had, quote, nothing to do with the media being harmed, but rather, I'm quoting his spokesperson now, actually looking out for their welfare. Boris, really appreciate it, <laughs> Kate. A treasure, for sure. And joining us right now to talk more about this is Democratic Governor of Kentucky, Andy Beshear, a surrogate for the Harris campaign. Governor, thank you for being here. Uh, you just heard that fact check laid out by Daniel Dale and the messaging that we're hearing from Donald Trump laying the groundwork to stir fears and stoke fears of voter fraud even before votes are being counted. What kind of impact do you think that kind of messaging is having in your state? 
Well, it is concerning that Donald Trump lies so easily. That should be concerning for a presidential candidate. That should be disqualifying for someone to ever become president. Uh, voting is the bedrock of our democracy. It's what's made the United States the greatest country in the history of planet Earth. And to have a presidential candidate that is willing to attack our system, uh, that's willing to do anything to win, to put himself above the country in democracy, that ought to be enough for all of us to see. Now, for the sake of, of the United States, for the sake of our future elections, we've got to defeat Donald Trump this last time. We've got to elect Kamala Harris and Tim Walls and then move past this division, this misinformation and disinformation and move to that better place where we remember we are Americans first and everything else second, third or fourth. Kentucky, not a battleground, as you well know, Governor. It was 96, 1996, the last time Kentucky voted for a Democratic president. I, I put that out there because I want to ask you this. Uh, I had a Republican senator on from Missouri earlier who said when it comes to Donald Trump's kind of dark and dangerous tone, that at least part of it is don't take him seriously, and people don't take him seriously. He said he was joking. What about Donald Trump's messages resonating, though, with voters in your state? Well, Donald Trump is 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 out there saying a lot of things, and and you've got to take a presidential candidate at their word. And it's not once he says it over and over and over, uh, just driving division the way he does. I mean, for me, I'm driven by my faith, which tells me I'm supposed to love my neighbor as myself. And the parable of the Good Samaritan says everyone is my neighbor, and that can be found in in all major religions. I want a presidential candidate that will live. Folks, no wonder journalists want Trump nowhere around them. They want him nowhere around these places, right? They really would prefer that security take him out of the room because, let's be clear, what he's doing is threatening journalists. And now he's saying, oh, if they, well, if they get me, they'll have to go through them first because they're, you know, they're covering this. But it's not a joke. It isn't. It isn't a joke, given what's happened. Given what's happened to him? Given what's happened in this country with January 6th and all of that, you've seen reporters harmed, whether covering politics within and outside the United States. And you've even seen, like, you remember that famous shirt? I, I believe this was from 2015, 2016, but there was a shirt that was worn at Trump rallies that said, journalist tree rope, some assembly required, right? Like the implication being that we're going to hang them from a tree, which is, of course, deeply troubling and i even saw a young journalist a student journalist who's not even started their career yet technically right say like this is terrifying as somebody who dreams of covering the news for a living and and being an essential part of democracy and freedom and transparency this scares me because it means that the man who is potentially the next president wants to see me dead so Listen to those reporters and listen to just how evil Trump and his core base is and realize that even if you don't like Kamala, she has to be the next president.